In this lesson, we're going to talk about multiplication and some good ways of doing that. Now, I'm going to use a non-traditional method, but it doesn't matter what method you use to multiply as long as you can multiply. So if your method is different to mine, that is absolutely fine as long as it works. So before we get started, let's do some easy ones. Now, if you get questions like this, we can do a little bit of cheating here. We can recognize that we've got uh, zeros going on. And without going into too much detail, we can sort of work out the bones of this, the three times the four in part A. Well, that's gonna be 12, isn't it? And we, we recognize that we've got four extra zeros in that question. So we can just write one, two, three, four. And that's gonna be our answer. It's similar with the second question. Uh, 80 times 70, well, you could just do eight times seven, which is 56, and there's two extra zeros in that question, so we can add them on. Now, I haven't really explained what's going on here, but think of that second question, 80 times 70, as being eight times 10 times seven times 10. 8 times 10 being the 80, 7 times 10 being the 70. Well, 8 times 10 is 56, and of course 10 times 10 is 100. So what we're really doing is 56 times 100, which is of course 5600, zero, zero. and that's why that method works. What we really need though is a more challenging method, uh, which, which is gonna help us to solve more complicated multiplication sums. Now, I'm gonna show you a grid method that I like. So to do 12 times 31, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a box. And this box is gonna look like that. And we're gonna write the 12 there, and we're gonna write the 31 there. And we're not gonna do this how you're probably expecting to do this. We're going to draw now some diagonal lines, splitting each of those four boxes into two parts. And we're gonna to start to multiply. Now, first of all, we're gonna do two times three, which is six, and we write that here, like that. Now, the bottom half of the box is for your units, your top half of the box is for your ten. So two times three is six, I've written zero, six. Two times one is two. 1 times 3 is 3, and 1 times 1 is, of course, 1. So that's the first part. Now, once you've done that, we're going to start to add in a diagonal sense. Now, these diagonal lines are important. These are the columns in which we're going to add with. So the first one, if we add that, we're going to get a 2. If we add this column together, we're going to have 7. If we add this column together, we're going to have a 3. And the last column doesn't have anything in it, so it's 0 there. And 12 times 31 is 3, 7, 2. 372. Now, that is a nice example, uh, but it doesn't really highlight all of the important parts going on here. And there are some things that can happen that make it a little bit more difficult. So we'll use the second example to help us uh, further improve our model. So let's do this again. And this time we're going to have 87 there multiplied by 98. So again, split each of the four boxes into two parts and then start to multiply. 7 times 9 is 63. 7 times 8 is 56, 8 times 9 is 72, 8 times 8 is 64. And then we're going to again start to add diagonally. So this way, if we're thinking about this first column, we're going to have a 6 here. Now the second column, if we add 4 and 5 and 3 together, we're going to get 12. But we do not write the 12 underneath. We only write the units of that number underneath. So the units of 12 is, of course, 2. And the 10s, well, they get moved on into the next column. I'll pop it up here. And we need to remember to add that 1 in when we do the next column. So the next column is going to be 6 and 2 and 6 and that 1, which will give us 15. And again, we write the units of the 15 there 
and we squeeze the, the tens column, the 15, the one, into the next box. So in this next box we have seven and one, which gives us eight. So the final answer to 87 times 98 is eight, five, two, six. 8,526, and that is how we use this method to multiply. We can extend it further though. It doesn't, it's, it's not just about two digit numbers. It can also be about bigger numbers and decimal numbers. So we'll try to illustrate that in the next two examples. So if I'm doing this one, we just need to construct a bigger box. So 420, sorry, 42.1, excuse me, has three digits. 5.2 has just two digits. So if we're going to construct this box, it's going to look something like this. So 42.1 and 5.2. So start to work this out. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 2 is 8. And now we're in a position to start to add. So we're going to have a 2 here. We're going to have 9 coming here. We've got just that 8 there, a 1 there, and a 2 there. So you might think that the answer is 2, 1, 8, 9, 2. However, that is not quite right. We've got to do a slight adjustment. Now, if we look at the decimal places, we can see one of them is here and one of them is here. And what we do is we go down from one and across from the other until they meet. And where they meet, we follow the diagonal line and that's where the decimal place goes right there. So the answer is actually, in fact, 218 point nine two so we cro we can cross out that way that was definitely wrong we've got our answer two one eight point nine two okay let's try that again with this other example so excuse me while I rub this off um, zero point four three times nine now we don't really have to include the zero but I will just to show you the method in full because of course those columns and rows are going to be just zero. Anything times zero is uh, zero. Now, so 0 0.43 times 9. Now, I'm going to put that there, but we don't need to put that there. I'm just going to use it so you can see perhaps where the decimal place is going to end up. Um, now, let's just finish this off. Now, before we start this time, we're going to start multiplying in a moment, but let's just think about that decimal place. At the end of this, our decimal place is going to end up here. And it's probably worth making that to start with so we don't confuse ourselves. Uh, another good thing we can say is that all of uh, this row is going to be zero because anything times zero is zero and all of this column is going to be zero as well because anything times zero is zero. So the only maths we've really got to do right now is three times nine which is 27 and four times nine which is 36. Now if we start to add we're going to have nothing in the first column or uh, we're going to have seven here, uh, we're going to have eight here and we're going to have three here. So you can see straight away the answer is going to be 3.87. So that is how we multiply. I hope that makes sense. You can now attempt all of the questions uh, from the question bank. Good luck.